Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Gann of Stellar Risk Management Services, and I'm your moderator for today's webinar, After the Attempted Coup, the Legal, Credit, and Collection Environment in Turkey. We have quite a large crowd in attendance today from around the globe, and I thank you all for being here. Today's webinar, the first of several planned under the Behrens Education Series, is sponsored by Behrens European Collection Attorneys. Behrens, established in 1952, is the oldest and largest commercial collection law firm in Europe. With a team of over 100 attorneys and staff, Behrens provides a one-stop shop model for your complete B2B debt recovery process throughout all of Europe. Before starting our webinar, let me take a moment to bring your attention to one item on the control panel on your screen. When you logged in and connected, a little control panel should have popped up on the right side of your computer screen. Towards the bottom of that control panel is where you can send in a question. As we'll be having a Q&A session after the presentation, please feel free to send in your questions at any time and as best as possible we'll try to answer them. Regarding today's presentation materials, please contact us afterwards and we'll be happy to email them out to you. Now, let me take a moment to briefly introduce today's presenter, Mr. Omer Farouk Selig. Mr. Selig received his bachelor's degree in law from Marmara University of Istanbul and his master's degree in commercial law from Erasmus University of Rotterdam. Mr. Selig has been a registered member of the Istanbul Bar Association since 2011 and is the lead attorney for all commercial, litigation, and bankruptcy matters throughout Turkey on behalf of Behrens clients. So with that, let's get started. Mr. Selig, please take it away. Steve, thank you so much for the opportunity to present today on the credit and collection environment in Turkey. It's a pleasure to be here. Hello everyone, welcome to the board. Let me take a moment to briefly introduce myself again. As Steve mentioned, uh, my name is Omer and uh, I am a qua Turkish qualified attorney working as the lead legal commercial services attorney at Behrens. Uh, and why we are here today is to talk about credit collection environment, especially after the attempted military coup in Turkey uh, I hope we have a quality time all together. Let's uh, start today's presentation uh, with the agenda. Um, first, I will give a quick status update on Turkey's political and economic situation, uh, which is uh, closely connected to the today's subject. Um, of course, there are a lot to talk on this as there are numerous different theories regarding what happened in Turkey, why it happened, and who was behind it. That is why I have to keep it brief and uh, I will try to make general comments uh, based on facts and try to avoid making uh, subjective comments on this matter. Um, in order to do this, uh, we will see what was happening in Turkey before and what is happening now. Um, after that, I will try to highlight the, uh, the effect of the attempted coup on the economy and the banking sector. Then we will go through an overview of the credit and collections in Turkey. First, I will project some numbers on registered collection and bankruptcy cases, both consumer and commercial. Um, then we are going to talk about a bit of customs of trade in Turkey, such as usual payment methods, commercial terms of sale, and the credit tools. I will finish this section uh, with important guidelines for the Turkish market. After the overview of the credit and collections in Turkey, and in the last section I will try to highlight um, the collection from the legal perspective, where we are going to see the collection options in Turkey, uh, the uh, judgment, uh, proceedings with judgment uh, through the court system, with its cost and fees, and uh, we will finish our today's uh, presentation with mentioning a bit of, about the bankruptcy in Turkey. Let's give a start. Um, a failed military coup and the current political situation. Um, what was happening in Turkey before the country faced the coup, actually? I wanted to uh, indicate some uh, important events. Uh, in order to understand well enough Turkey's current political and economic situation, 
I thought it would be better. Um, actually, uh, this event, starting especially with the occupation of the Gezi Park uh, um, uh, by the protesters uh, against the dictations of the government, uh, replacing a park with a shopping mall, which uh, took place in touristic Praxim Square. Probably you may know uh, if you were following the news uh, that day, it was very uh, trendy. Um, soon after, the country was shaken this time by 17th and 25th December 2013, uh, corruption allegations of uh, four ministers in the cabinet uh, involving their family members, uh, actually that uh, has ignited the fuse. Um, these uh, people behind this call by the government, since they rejected all the allegations, uh, by uh, saying that they were all the evidences were forged or fake, and the, the, the people behind this call by the government as parallel state, and uh, of course uh, half of the country didn't uh, believe that, and the nation uh, polarized and become pro and anti Erdogan uh, as a result. Uh, following with this event, oppression, oppression on the media and uh, uh, on the judiciary has started and uh, many police officers suspended from their profession and many was arrested as well and uh, uh, we can say also violation of the freedom of speech and the freedom of press became a bad habit in the country. Um, or people start being actually judged by what they say, what they think and what they write. Um, on the other hand, uh, we cannot pass without mentioning the Syrian civil war and its severe consequences on the country, on the society, of course, and on the economy. Uh, another important event was end of peace talks with the uh, PKK Kurdish terrorist groups. After two years, the ceasefire with the Kurdish terrorist group was terminated and the fight started again uh, with the higher intensity in the southeast Turkey. Since then, the terrorist group has started organizing attacks and bombings in the cities of Turkey again. Uh, problems with the neighboring countries, uh, such as aircraft crisis with Russia uh, lately uh, on the border of Turkey, Syria, followed by uh, the sanctions of Russia on trade uh, and tourism with Turkey. Uh, and last but not least, uh, the attempted military coup by the small group of military elites with the intention of overthrowing the President Erdogan and the government um, took place on the 15th of July 2016 and the nation was deeply shaken once again with this tragic event of course. The Turkish uh, nation with its commitment to their flag and the national values uh, they were able to repel the coup attempt by facing the fact that more than 200 civil death toll and many veterans remained behind. Um, when we come to the current political situation in Turkey, we can uh, say a declaration of the state of emergency following the uh, attempted military coup, uh, coup uh, for three months, which was uh, extended a couple of weeks ago, three more months, and also investigations uh, followed by uh, followed by arrest and detentions of military officers, uh, school teachers, uh, academics, and judges and prosecutors. We are talking about almost 80,000 uh, 80, 80, dismissals from profession all over the country. Also, I can say that uh, nowadays very trendy uh, topic in Turkey, uh, the government wants to pass a new prepared constitution with the intention uh, of changing the democratic uh, republic into presidential uh, system. Uh, also, country is governed uh, now uh, because of the state of emergency by fast past decrees, uh, which is the most arguable point lately in the discussions made by opponents. Um, also, when we go to the uh, impact of the coup on the economy and the banking sector, actually, in this section I put some statistics in order to reflect the economic changes in the last years in Turkey. Um, as we can see mainly in all major indicators, uh, we can see that uh, there is a downward trend. Uh, but at the end, these are the numbers and statistics. And uh, as uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, you may know, uh, the uh, former coach of uh, Manchester United said, statistics can give you something 
but never uh, give you exactly what you want. That's why only focusing on the numbers would be tricky. That's why uh, while you are looking at these numbers, I will be telling how actually is the market economy, um, how the businesses are affected by these frustrating events, and uh, of course the small changes in these numbers have influence in the streets way more than it seems. For example, when I talk with the clients, the debtors, the friends or merchants, the, the first reality in the streets is the shortage of cash, the cash flow problems, uh, which uh, also affect on commercial terms of sale in Turkey. As a result, we can say also private consumption slowed and uh, businesses become more dependent to the loans in order to maintain uh, their businesses. Um, in the quarters ahead, the economy will continue to be supported by the domestic demand. Uh, and however, uh, the ongoing war with the Kurdish militants, um, lower tourism receipts and gradual recovery in uh, global oil prices cloud the growth outlook. Um, for example, uh, all, especially in this uh, in this slide, in the set, next slide, uh, we see exchange rates, which is uh, really important for foreigner investors and the merchants. Uh, we see here uh, from 2011 till 2015 uh, the the exchange rates, uh, as well as uh, exports and imports numbers uh, and. Uh, what I can say about it, uh, for example, yesterday, uh, if we are talking about the current currency rate, uh, yesterday uh, the currency traded at uh, 3.09 against the US dollar, and um, Euro also uh, was uh, 3.4 uh, Turkish lira per Euro on the same day. Uh, however, uh, economists have a better outlook in business confidence with the new year. Um, September's results showed that um, businesses are becoming more optimistic and the total amount of orders uh, in the previous three months increased and uh, also export orders hit a four-month high. I will finish this section uh, with the, uh, according to foreign forecast panelists, uh, the strengths and the weaknesses of the Turkish economy at the moment is Strands uh, are custom union with European Union, uh, customs union with European Union, benefits external sector. Uh, another strand is a large domestic market and a sound economic policy. Uh, on the other hand, weaknesses are uh, large external imbalances, persistent geographical, uh, geopolitical tensions, um, and uh, high structural uh, unemployment, we can say. Uh, let's go to another slide. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show also the Turkey's country risk, uh, whether it's downgraded or not. We can see in this table, uh, especially after the military coup, uh, it was downgraded by Moody's and uh, the lira and Turkish stocks slid on 26th of September following the news that um, Moody's downgraded the Turkey's credit rating to BA1 level. Uh, this is the second time, actually, since the failed coup uh, that the country's credit rating has been downgraded. And uh, the concerns are regarding uh, a slowing economy and risks related to the country's external fund funding requirements. Of course, this puts uh, pressure on the lira and Turkish stocks. And uh, we go to another slide with a new title and overview of credit and collections in Turkey. I wanted to uh, project some also numbers on consumer and commercial registered claims. As we can see there is a drastic change uh, starting from 2011 and uh, 2015 uh, we see a 6 million difference in the number of cases increased approximately 65% of the cases in the uh, enforcement offices are carried out over the next year. And uh, also we can see in this next slide uh, number of bankruptcy cases uh, also starting from 2011 to up to 2015. We can see also there's the huge increase in the numbers of the cases. But uh, rather than the numbers, why 
these increase happened, uh, what is the reason it's important? Uh, according to statistics, uh, to, to in 2015, uh, the inflation rate was 8.8 percent, but the food inflation, uh, which is the most important rate for uh, low-income families, have never dropped under two digits, uh, and uh, that has affected the society and reduced the life standard, of course, of the citizens. Uh, while citizens were uh, struggling to protect their life standards uh, with the optimistic expectations on the long-term economy, they have chosen to go into debt. Businesses uh, as consumers uh, also become more dependent to the loans in order to maintain their businesses. However, after no increase happened in their income due to fluctuating economy, they couldn't pay their debts, uh, which caused the increase actually in registered claims as well as the bankruptcy. Um, let's go to another slide. Uh, yeah, in this slide, I would I wanted to talk about a bit of commercial terms of sale and uh, usual payment methods in Turkey, customs of uh, trade uh, trade in Turkey. Um, uh, depending on a sector, uh, commercial terms uh, of sale range from actually nowadays uh, 60 days up to 220 days. Uh, why? Depending on a sector, because I just heard in the textile sector uh, we are talking about six months up to 12 months. And uh, usually, in general, in Turkey, uh, just as a note, uh, the general pre most preferable terms of sale is 30 days. Uh, but of course, due to economic situations, uh, there is there are more longer terms of sales. Uh, also, um, some information about the markets as well. In domestic market, um, checks and promissory notes prevail as the payment method. Also, we can see bills of exchange used uh, in the transactions. Uh, also, um, we can say, uh, yeah, if the parties are in a long relationship, uh, if they know each other already well now, uh, bank transfers are the most commonly used options. Uh, Turkey has a quite advanced banking sector and. Uh, Banking transfers are quite secure. And depending on the risk level of the transaction, uh, like the high amounts uh, or the parties doesn't know each other, is the first uh, business with the third parties, uh, then a letter of bank guarantee uh, may also be required by the parties. Uh, letter of bank guarantee is more national wise, domestic wise. Um, but yeah, we will come to there. For international uh, parties, uh, I would recommend the letter of credit, uh, letter uh, rather than the letter of bank guarantee. Uh, but on this page also, we can add um, personal guarantees are often required for the first-time transactions. Also, parties if they want to secure uh, themselves uh, in case, especially uh, when the other parties are limited liability. Uh, companies, as you know, uh, directors are not accountable with their individual assets uh, if they have a limited liability company. And then uh, personal guarantees uh, in the contracts uh, are, vital, uh, are of vital importance, actually. Uh, it can uh, secure your positions. Let's go to the next slide. Um, what are the credit tools and reports uh, to rely on in Turkey? Uh, letter of guarantee issued by bank, as we talked in the previous slide. Uh, letter of guarantee uh, is a quite uh, nice uh, option, secure option, let's say. But uh, the letter of credit for international transactions uh, uh, very, very secure, uh, and it should be asked asked by the uh, by the seller. Actually, uh, in this case, 
you probably know uh, this is really technical topic, letter of credit, uh, and there are a lot of different types of letter of credit, but the letter of credit actually in the basic means uh, the bank is uh, in, uh, guarantees the payment if the buyer doesn't pay, then you can uh, recoup from the bank. There is a bank guarantee behind this letter of credit. This is very important. On the other hand, um, credit reports, uh, I know uh, we also use as a company, uh, credit reports uh, also well uh, known uh, in many countries and uh, they perceived as a, a reliable sources, but in Turkey I wouldn't say that way because um, there are a lot of various uh, organizations uh, such as credit insurance carriers, banks, and other data information providers, uh, but uh, what we see on these credit reports actually not detailed financial numbers, but uh, some uh, let's say basic informations that can be found easily uh, anywhere. Uh, that's why uh, these only relying on credit reports uh, while you are doing your credit decisions can be misleading uh, or yeah too general to be trustworthy. Because why, uh, for example, small medium enterprises in Turkey, they are not obliged to be monitored by the uh, financial institutions. Um, there is no public registry on companies, uh, financial and detailed general data. So uh, to collect a firm's data, uh, small medium enterprises, an information agency uh, has to contact the company and get its authorization. Uh, to have this uh, opportunity to investigate. That's why, uh, please be careful, uh, do not rely only on the credit reports. On the other hand, uh, what, what you, you can do about it is, uh, what is important is uh, that a company's reputation in their sector uh, is very important. If you have networks, uh, of course, uh, use them and uh, uh, these plays very big role in, in, in order to reduce the, the risks. Banking connections, uh, because banks are uh, having the most accurate knowledge and information on the companies. Uh, they are of course not allowed to share, but uh, if you use international banks, uh, you can maybe ask uh, from your banks uh, to have information via Turkish bank and uh, make it work in order to reduce your risks. Um, let's uh, go to another slide. Uh, on this slide, uh, I wanted to uh, show some important guidelines on the Turkish market. Of course, there are a lot of things to say in there, but I wanted to uh, point out some important points. For example, uh, protective legal services are of vital importance. And uh, why? It's because um, general terms of conditions and the contracts, if you have chances, please uh, be careful and uh, let your legal persons and your lawyers uh, examine your general terms and conditions and uh, your contracts. Uh, this is really important. It can save some time and some money uh, in the future for you. And also difficult to apply foreign laws in Turkish courts and uh, of course it might be time consuming. Uh, there is a way uh, in the law, of course, uh, if there is a choice of law, foreign law in the contract, uh, Turkish judges must apply it to the case. But uh, when we look at the, uh, the situation uh, going on in the legal system in Turkey now, uh, since the many judges are dismissed from their profession, new ones appointed and uh, there is a quite chaos. So if there is a foreign law in Turkish courts, it would be very difficult for a judge to apply and uh, have a satisfied uh, result. And uh, foreign judgments, if you have a foreign judgments, we will come that in this topic later on again, but uh, foreign judgments uh, needs to be recognized in order to be enforced in Turkey against the debtor. Um, Please also make sure that uh, you have uh, the originals and the copies of all contracts and the pertinent correspondence in both languages. Um, 
make absolutely sure also that your customer understands your general terms and conditions and your payment terms, of course. Uh, yeah, this is important point. Adapters uh, can be pretty good uh, storytellers in Turkey. That's why you should know when to act. Of course, you should do. Uh, you should empathize, uh, make empathy with the uh, with adapters uh, while uh, you are uh, talking with them. You should listen to them, but you have to be aware that they can be really good storytellers, and you have to be sure when to act. And uh, also be aware that uh, collection uh, uh, agencies are not allowed uh, in Turkey. Only lawyers are in charge of collection which is actually not bad because uh, if you work with uh, lawyers uh, the, they are more experienced and uh, they know what uh, they need to do. Uh, in Istanbul for example there are more than uh, now I think uh, maybe four, more than 40,000 40, uh, lawyers registered in the Istanbul Bar Association so uh, this is also another information if you would like to know. And uh, we are going to the Debt collection in Turkey, from a legal perspective, um, I just wanted to uh, show some uh, legal uh, ways, options uh, in case the case disputed or there is a problem of the collectability of the credit. Um, what we can, uh, what we can uh, say about it is uh, the creditors uh, can initiate execution proceedings um, by submitting an execution request uh, to the competent execution office. Um, within three days following the submission of the execution request, uh, the enforcement office then must issue a payment order and uh, serve it, the, serve this order uh, on the debtor's place of business or residence. And then uh, upon the receipt of the payment order, uh, the debtor must act in the following like three ways. Uh, first, uh, paying the amount. Second, objecting the uh, claim. Or third, declaring, the, declaring his property. Uh, as uh, uh, you see, debtors have seven days to object the claim after receiving the service, and if they don't, orders then become final and binding, and then they must pay the amount requested in the payment order, or they need to declare uh, their property uh, to show that he is not able to pay. Actually, that's why he has to declare his property to the enforcement office for transparency. And uh, the creditors uh, becomes then, if they don't pay, the creditor becomes uh, entitled to request attachment of the debtor's assets. Uh, please keep in mind that if the claim based on negotiable instruments, uh, it is more strict, for example, if the claim comes from negotiable instrument, for, for example, checks, uh, debtors have then five days to object, not seven days. And uh, also, um, they have to, uh, they have to uh, prove uh, why they object the claim, uh, which is very difficult if there is a, a, a negotiable instrument. Um, if the debtors object the claim uh, within the days, uh, seven days, let's say, or five days, then uh, the execution proceeding will be suspended automatically. And uh, in order to dismiss the objection, uh, then the creditor may file a cancellation of objection lawsuit. And, uh, I am looking at my notes here. Yeah, uh, this cancellation of uh, objection lawsuit might take one or two years, depending on the case. And on the next slide, uh, yeah, this is uh, the the first one was proceedings, execution proceedings without a judgment. And on this slide, on this slide, proceeding with a judgment. 
Uh, for this, of course, uh, there must be a prior court decision to start the execution proceedings. And uh, if you already have a foreign judgment, for example, already from your own country, uh, the creditor, uh, uh, you then must initiate recognition and enforcement proceedings of a foreign judgment in Turkish courts. Uh, as long as the, the, the foreign judgment is not against the public, uh, the public law, uh, constitutional law, uh, it will be recognized, let's say. Uh, these procedures are uh, usually one or two hearings. Uh, we can say uh, up to eight months uh, and one year it, it can take. Uh, while I am telling this, I am considering the current situation uh, in Turkey, of course, the legal system and the courts. Uh, when everything's uh, settled down again, uh, these times uh, will be less than it seems, of course. Uh, however, if you don't have uh, any judgment, uh, you can uh, file a lawsuit in Turkish courts. And uh, after having the judgment, uh, you can go through execution for these proceedings with that judgment. Uh, this uh, is usually, yeah, it's a kind of long procedure and uh, yeah, may take up to two years if you initiate uh, proceedings in Turkish courts. And what happens in these uh, hearings actually, uh, the judge examines the, examines the case based on the merits of the case, but uh, staying uh, within the frame of the claims, of course, of the parties. Um, also, uh, additional to that, listening to witnesses uh, of the parties, very common. And uh, usually, uh, judges apply to the, to the uh, ask to the experts, appointing the experts to examine the case and uh, draft a report uh, if it's a technical topic, for example. Uh, this is what usually happens in the course of these judgments. In the next slide, uh, I would like to show some costs of these execution proceedings and filling lawsuit. Uh, execution Proceedings, for example, uh, without a judgment, of course, if you have a claim, you can go to the enforcement office and register your claim. Uh, at the beginning, uh, you have to deposit five out of thousand of the total claim. Uh, you have to deposit this amount to the enforcement office. And then uh, there are also other requirements, some fees, related expenses, such as fee of uh, service of documents, uh, stamp fees also must be paid. But in this case, what we are talking about is uh, depending on your claim and case and the paperwork, 50 United States dollar uh, or 100, let's say, uh, additional expenses uh, you might, might pay. Um, on the other hand, for seizure of the assets and uh, for selling them, of course, in every stage, uh, there are additional fees must be paid uh, for that. And uh, if the claim is contested and the, uh, the claimant, as a, uh, as a claimant, you would like to take the case to the court for the cancellation of the objection, uh, also you need to deposit another extra court fee. Uh, for the fees of bringing a lawsuit in Turkey, um, approximately claimants uh, must uh, deposit 17 out of 1,000 of the total claim, uh, if so, of course, if it's a monetary claim. And uh, there is, according to the law, there are also additional expenses to that, which is supposed to be uh, deposited in the, in the uh, initiating phase at the beginning of the uh, case. Um, these uh, are the expenses of uh, anticip anticipated uh, legal expenses uh, during the course of uh, proceeding, uh, such as, as I said, 
if the court um, appoint expert and if you would like to if the judge uh, would like to have an expert report these legal expenses must be paid by the claimant um, but however uh, all these legal expenses let's say I can uh, say um, not the lawyer fees but uh, all the legal expenses can be uh, recouped uh, from the defendant if the defendant lose losing party is ordered to bear the all legal costs of course the collectability of the uh, monetary sentence is important if he is already bankrupt insolvent there is also always there are risks for that as well and uh, our last slide, I would like to talk about filing a bankruptcy in Turkey a bit. Uh, I know it is a very technical topic, but I will just try to uh, tell some important points. Uh, and also, I assume probably you more or less uh, the uh, bankruptcy proceedings, the philosophy behind it, the uh, mentality is more or less same in uh, every country. Um, creditors uh, may prefer commencing bankruptcy proceedings over commencing execution proceedings. Uh, as in bankruptcy, uh, all debts, including the ones that will become due in the future, will become due and all of the debtor's assets will become subject to liquidation for the purpose of satisfying the creditors. Um, Bankruptcy proceedings uh, in Turkey can only be commenced against merchants. Uh, this is uh, also a very important point. And uh, as bankruptcy lawsuits generally take more than a year, uh, it's not very preferable options. At least at the beginning, uh, some creditors avoid requesting the bank debt, uh, debtor's bankruptcy at the beginning, but they prefer to uh, go with the execution proceedings, but then at the end, if there is no more option, they go for the bankruptcy in Turkey. Um, creditors may also directly request a debtor's bankruptcy from the competent commercial courts, but for this uh, direct request, uh, there are conditions uh, must Met, uh, must be met. Uh, what are these conditions? For example, if the debtor does not have a per permanent address or uh, if the debtor is hiding in order to not to pay his debts uh, or he is involved in fraudulent practices and or he hides his assets uh, during execution proceedings or uh, the creditors are explicitly or, or implicitly uh, informed by the debtor that the due receivables may never be paid. In those kind of uh, conditions, uh, if those conditions are met or one of them, uh, there is a solid ground to go for a direct request for a bankruptcy of the debtor. And uh, once the decision of bankruptcy is granted, of course, uh, the decision is conveyed to the competent bankruptcy office and uh, it will be taken care of with the bankruptcy office in Turkey. I am not sure you have this uh, one, the last point, the postponement of bankruptcy in other countries, but in Turkey we have uh, such a way, uh, it's called postponement of bankruptcy. Um, such as in, uh, in this case, uh, the company's board of directors uh, or any of its creditors will file the request to the postpone bankruptcy. Uh, this uh, request must be made uh, along with a reasonable recovery plan, of course, recovery project it's called, to the commercial court. Uh, the judge will uh, examine the recovery project and if he believes that uh, he can make the business uh, live again, uh, the period of postponement uh, is maximum of one year and he will uh, postpone the bankruptcy. Uh, however, uh, this period may be extended every each year annually by the commercial court 
up to in total five years. And uh, these are all I wanted to say regarding these topics. And uh, we came to the at the end of my presentation. I am looking at my clock. Yeah, 40, 40 minutes. Uh, I hope it was okay. And uh, sorry for my uh, language mistakes and everything. And thank you for your attention. And uh, please, if you need more information, do not hesitate to contact us anytime. As you can see in this uh, information, you can reach us via telephone or email. Uh, please feel free to do that. We would be glad to help you anytime. Thank you for attention again. And uh, if there are any questions, uh, I am here to answer them. And uh, Steve, please let me know if there are questions arise. Omar, thank you so much for a very enlightening presentation. And uh, I did not know that only attorneys are able to collect uh, in Turkey. And so that was a, a very important piece of information for me. Uh, the uh, interesting thing here is that uh, right off the, the top, we have many questions that came in. And the first one is that, is it necessary for the creditor to be a witness in court in a case that is being sued and disputed? Okay. Um, uh, in, in Turkey, according to Turkish law, um, uh, the claimant uh, uh, is not obliged to be present in the hearings in the court. Uh, of course, it's an uh, important point for the in, in, in international businesses. Uh, in case they sue them in Turkey, they wonder whether they need to be there or not. Of course, but it's not obligatory, uh, as I said. However, uh, the judge might uh, need uh, his their testimony, let's say, uh, their declaration in the court, and uh, it might be the case. But lawyers in Turkey, uh, after they have the power of attorney from their clients, they are. Uh, uh, entitled to make any kind of declaration on behalf of their clients uh, before the court. But, uh, however, there is another point, uh, because we do as parents also the northern Cyprus of Turkish Republic, where the legal system is different than the Turkey a bit. And uh, in northern Cyprus, so far I know, uh, if there is a case going on there in the court, yeah, the, it's obligatory. Uh, is one of the witnesses from the claimant supposed to be there in at least in one hearing to be asked by the judge. This is what I can say about it. Okay, very good. Have uh, uh, can you go back to your page eight regarding bankruptcies? Of course. Page eight and. Okay. and um, uh, one question that we had. The next question is: Well, do you think that bankruptcies will increase in 2016, based on the data so far for this or for up to last year? Is there evidence that collections will also be increasing? Um, yes. I unfortunately, I am sorry to say that it's tragic comic actually. But uh, from a mathematical point of view, even when we look at the table here. I can say that it's going to increase, especially uh, you know because the uh, all the events happened in Turkey are was the sources partly uh, the sources of these increases, as we talk, and uh, by the two by 2016 the, the intensity uh, and importance of the events happened in Turkey also increased so far. We can say in 2016, uh, of course, I, I uh, expect that the numbers will be increased, uh, as well as the registered claims. Very good. The next one is, uh, is there an age for uh, the debt that creditors are banned to claim? And I think this uh, question has to do with statute of limitations. Generally speaking, uh, Omar, what is the statute of limitations on a commercial debt? Um, uh, general limitation uh, of a claim uh, is 10 years in Turkey. 10 years, okay. Exactly. This, if, for example, invoices uh, are uh, um, due to 10 years limitation. 
and okay. there, there are a lot of limitations depending on a case, but in general, really related with our credit and collections, mostly uh, the claims are uh, 10 years limited. Our next question. Are there any foreign exchange restrictions imposed by the government? For example, uh, in Egypt and in Argentina, it has been severely restricted to send wire transfers uh, uh, out of the country. How about Turkey? Um, uh, so far, what I know uh, from my friends from banking sector, um, there is uh, not uh, such a uh, limitation. Uh, as I said, banking uh, sector quite advanced in Turkey, and uh, with the wire transaction uh, transfers, uh, uh, everything is well uh, known and used commonly in Turkey. Um, so far, uh, just a small note: uh, PayPal uh, is not working. For example, after the military coup, they stopped working with Turkey. And uh, but on the other hand, there are a lot of international banks, uh, Turkish banks, uh, with international partners. And uh, I believe this is the this should be the last concern. Very good. Thank you. The next question is: Are countersuits a strategy that is sometimes used by debtors in Turkey to thwart the the original suit? Um, yeah, it's of course um, human brains uh, usually work in the same way. Uh, as a strategy in Turkey, people try to use uh, these uh, counterclaims or bringing another lawsuit uh, against the claimant. Uh, of course, but there are also uh, some limitations or, or, or some law uh, to, uh, in order to reduce this happening uh, in, case uh, uh, in case of uh, unjustified claims. Uh, what I mean is, for example, we talk about here, uh, when we, let's uh, come to the slide back. Uh, yeah, in this case, for example, uh, if the debtors object the claim, uh, then the claimant uh, must uh, or may file a cancellation of objection lawsuit. And if this case goes to the court, then uh, the judge may sentence 20% uh, at least penalty fee to the uh, defendant or claimant in case the, the, the claim is unjustified, which means sometimes we see debtors uh, arising uh, objection uh, and, and or counterclaiming uh, and or just to gain some more time or escape from their creditors. That's why, in order to prevent this from happening, uh, there is a law that, in this case, if the judge understands at the end of the judgment that it was not a uh, justified claim, then uh, one of the parties, losing party, will be sentenced at least 20% uh, uh, penalty fee additional to the claim. Very interesting. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, is there a main or central lawsuit registry or database where any lawsuit filed against a company can be easily seen? Um, yeah, of course we have a central civil uh, system, uh, but um, lawyers are uh, uh, able to use this system, of course, but the, there is a limitation. Uh, lawyers can see via this system only the cases of their clients uh, from which uh, they ha have been given uh, the power of attorney. They have to put the first put the power of attorney, uh, upload the power of attorney to the system, then they will be able to see the cases, everything going on in the system. But uh, on the other hand, there is a, the only the court clerks and the judge. They have through the, their system, they can see everything. So I would say, yeah, it's not possible to see uh, every case going on uh, as you wish. Thank you. Our next question: Are personal guarantees enforceable in Turkey? Oh yeah, it's uh, we talk about it. Uh, yeah, it's 
personal guarantees are uh, since the through uh, it's applied free freedom of contract uh, of course people can uh, negotiate uh, and put personal guarantees uh, in their contract and uh, it will be valid uh, in according to Turkish law um, personal guarantees are important as I said and uh, I am telling again here for our international uh, uh, audits uh, they should try to add uh, personal guarantees in case they don't know the other party uh, if it is the first uh, business transaction with the Turkish party uh, of course this is depending on a bargaining power uh, not everyone is willing to put their personal guarantee because they uh, have a limited liability company otherwise they wouldn't have uh, it's not easy but if the party has a bargaining power of course they should negotiate on this and this is of course uh, valid in Turkish law very good thank you very much here's our next question it's a long question a little bit of a difficult question but kind of an interesting question this is a little bit of a personal question but with the recent political instability do you feel that Turkey might be susceptible to a to becoming a religious society or will it remain a secular society um. And if that's a law, if that question might be too sensitive, we can, you can. No, uh, no, it's that, not that. about okay. too sensitive, but we can talk about this till morning. That's the thing. Uh, but uh, in short, what I can say, I don't think uh, Turkey will become a religious society. Um, religion uh, is depending on a person, and it's supposed to be like that. Uh, it is, uh, I don't know, just I think because of the self-interest of the uh, people who is managing the country, I think they use um, these religions, uh, the, the em emotions and everything uh, for their self-interest. Uh, that's why people think that, oh, they are going to become a religious society, um, but I don't think uh, Turkey, I think uh, Turkey will stay and will have to uh, stay in a, in a, with a, in a, within a secular uh, mentality and it would be good for Turkey if they could stay, if they could achieve it. And uh, yeah, I, I would say a lot on this but uh, it is not the platform to talk on this but I hope uh, in another platform we can talk in detail and uh, of course I have a lot to say on this and uh, thanks for the question and I hope the answer is uh, uh, was a bit enough for the uh, it was thank you very much here's our next question is a uh, default bond available to Turkish lawyers in other words should an attorney uh, not remit funds to an overseas creditor does the creditor have any recourse uh, to against that attorney? Of course, if there is, a, you mean like if someone's money uh, was not sent uh, by his lawyer, can he bring a lawsuit against his attorney? Or does is uh, here in the U.S. and in Europe, uh, many times lawyers are bonded and that bond is like an insurance policy on the attorney in the event that he does not remit the funds back to the original creditor. Of course, uh, it's also uh, obligatory for a lawyer to send his clients money, otherwise they would be in a really harsh situation uh, and from criminal law perspective they are accountable for those kind of actions and in case of a complaint uh, about them, uh, yeah, they will have a lot of problems uh, and the, 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 there should be no uh, hesitancy uh, about that. I don't think it's going to be a problem because they are obliged to uh, send 
uh, transport their cli clients uh, money after the collection or whatever it is but if there is of course if there is a dispute they can uh, um, reach a consensus or if there is not there is a legal way of course towards to that uh, we're coming up to the end of the hour and uh, we have one last question and that is what one piece of advice or what ap what item absolute item should a uh, uh, a supplier to a customer in uh, Turkey absolutely do to help uh, collect their uh, or either to uh, prevent a claim or to uh, facilitate the handling of a claim should that become an issue? I'm really sorry. The, I had a difficulty to understand this question. Can you repeat again? Sure. What item should be absolutely included? either in the initial contract that would uh, minimize uh, oh, yeah. the potential claim or facilitate oh. the legal handling of a claim? Oh, of course, uh, I got uh, your point now. Um, yeah, as I said in my presentation, uh, these protective legal measures are uh, vital of importance. Um, contracts, uh, what is important, as I said, um, uh, choice of form and uh, applicable law clauses. I know parties are, especially foreign parties, are really intent to add their own uh, uh, competent court and their applicable law. And as we all know, English law uh, is uh, prevails within these uh, international contracts, uh, arbitration clauses, and everything. But uh, if the problem uh, going to be a monetary problem from the the, the other party from Turkey. What I would say, the, the Turkish uh, courts, uh, at least, uh, supposed to be included in the should included in the contract. Uh, even though the court uh, system is uh, kind of slow now, uh, since we are going to uh, or they are going to enforce it against a debtor in Turkey, it would be more suitable for them uh, to go through this. Uh, otherwise, they have always option, as I said before, um, they, if they uh, add uh, their own country, uh, their own competent court, uh, they can still have a chance uh, to go for a recognition and enforcement procedure in Turkey, and uh, they can then enforce their judgment, foreign judgment, against debtors. On the other hand, uh, they should be careful about the force measure clauses. Uh, acts of gods in case of uh, uh, non fulfillment of the duty on uh, the, it's important to know when the other party is uh, accountable or not uh, this what I can say about it Steve thank you very much Omar uh, this thank is you. going to wrap up today's presentation we have so many other questions that uh, still need to be answered and Omar I'm going to send them to you and let you respond uh, to the uh, attendees separately um, before we end today's session a couple of quick items first please feel free to join the European legal credit and debt collection forum discussion group on LinkedIn which now has over 1100 members we have many credit and collection risk professionals, and you will find our discussions and comments to be quite informative and valuable. Again, the name of the group is the European Legal Credit and Debt Collection Forum. I would also like to mention that the Barron's website is barronsgroup.com. That's B-I-E-R-E-N-S group.com. As part of our webinar series, about once a quarter, we will be presenting a new topic focusing on another European country that we believe will add value to your international sales and global credit risk management needs. You'll be hearing from us again in a couple of months about our next topic. Finally, you'll be receiving a thank you note from us that will contain all of the contact information of our presenter, Mr. Selleck, for your reference. By all means, please feel free to contact him regarding any questions, comments, or needs that you may have. And uh, if uh, in that, you'll also um, can request uh, a copy of today's presentation materials. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We had thank so, you so many much for joining us, and I wish you have a good day all. We had so many people from around the globe, 
and uh, we'll, we'll be back in touch with you shortly, and I'll now be ending the session. Omer, thank you very much again today. It thank was you. a real pleasure. Thank you, Nath.